Let's talk about what, what the teen can expect, because okay. from talking with you, I understand that most teens feel like they're jumping through hoops for everybody, mm -hmm. and from what I understand is you are the one who dedicates yourself to jumping through hoops for the teen. Let's right. talk about that a little bit. So sometimes teens are reluctant to come see me because they think it's therapy, and I make it really clear, I am absolutely not a therapist and I don't do therapy. And I am here for the teen, which is really different than most situations in a teen's life. They're in school and they're at home, and like I said, they're constantly jumping through hoops. They have to prove themselves to their teachers, they have to prove themselves to their sports coaches and to their school counselors and to the principal and to their parents and to their grandparents. And I come to them and say, you don't have to prove anything to me. I'm going to come to you and show you who I am. Here, ask me anything you need to know about me. Um, I will be jumping through hoops for you, which completely puts them at ease right away. I'm here for them. They are not here for me. It's a completely different situation than all the other situations in their lives. And it right. Works. It also puts them in control of the discussion. They don't feel right. like, like you're going to be asking them a ton of questions and they've got to come up with an answer. It's actually they're self-directing the conversation because in coaching, it, it isn't that, that you're, you're going to do the work for them, you're going to guide them, but they need to dig in and find out what it is that they want to achieve. Right, and actually, um, and here's a tip for parents, I actually, they do not have to answer a question. What I say, this is a tip for all you parents that are frustrated with kids saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> what I usually say is, when you say I don't know, it's beneath you. You are much smarter than that and it doesn't show how intelligent you are when you say, I don't know. If you don't want to answer the question, you can say, I don't want to answer the question. Otherwise, dig deep and give me your honest answer. And that works really well. I, I want to talk about restoring family enjoyment. Um, it, it, a lot of families that are in crisis or are struggling to, to find equilibrium, sometimes they just don't even know what they want. Mm -hmm. and. I'm guessing that just being able to enjoy each other's company again would be a milestone Absolutely. on that path. One of the problems that I see, one of the challenges for parents and teens is that there's so many expectations and they're off base. They're not really connecting because the expectations are not accurate. So what we do in coaching is explain to each of the parties what are accurate expectations. And then it's easier for them to behave in a manner that's true to themselves and in a manner that's mutually respectful. So that's, it's just a simple little tweak. That's what's so awesome about it. It's just really simple. And then parents and teens can feel their own power without overpowering each other. Mm -hmm. And I like that idea of feeling their own power. I know when we talked, um, not too long ago, you mentioned that a, a lot of teens feel like the, the, the quarterback is the coolest guy and he has no problems. Yeah. The cheerleaders are you know, on top of their game and they never face any issues. And from my understanding of what we talked about, they actually are as confused as everybody else. They may yeah. just be able to better mask it. I've worked with thousands of teens and I can say honestly for absolutely sure that I would say 97 or 98 percent of them are insecure. Not that that's a bad thing. It's kind of it kind of goes with that sort of where am I and who am I and where am I going and where was I and how do I integrate that all. But absolutely there are quarterbacks that uh, cry before games because they don't want to let down not only their team but their parents and the school. So every, every sort of click, if you want to say that, they all have their insecurities. And so do the, the, the kids that sort of are, I don't know what you call them, the ones that sort of don't fit into those typical clicks. Everybody is struggling with who am I and where am I going? That's a typical teen question. The great thing is if you can resolve it when you're a teenager, you don't have to be asking that question when you're 40 years old. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about... You know, we've talked about who you work with and, and a little bit about how you work with. Let's talk about expectations. What can a family hope for in working with Margaret Crane? Well, to put it completely bluntly, if they're willing to bring 100% to the table, as I bring 100% to the table, they will have 
results. I guarantee my results. They will have harmony. They will see that they and their kids have more moments of success at home and in, out in the world. They will be able to communicate effectively. The parents will be able to set and follow through on uh, rules and consequences. And the kids will only grumble a little bit. And they will enjoy themselves a lot more. And I guarantee those if the parents and or whoever I'm working with is willing to bring 100% to the table, I can guarantee that. A bit about rules and consequences. Okay. Because my understanding is that if, if you've got rules and there are no consequences or no follow through, right. why have the rules? This is my favorite topic. This is my expertise is how to set rules and consequences that you can follow through on. So a lot of parents set rules that don't really reflect their values and they're not really aware of it. Or sometimes the rules can conflict with each other. Like it's this value and this value, but those two values conflict. The other problem is that parents are afraid to have follow through. For instance, my child will hate me or I like it when they smile. I don't like it when they grumble. It makes me feel bad. Or my parents were very strict and I don't want to be like my parents. So there's all kinds of chatter that goes on in a parent's head around rules and consequences. I make it actually cut through the chatter and make it really simple. The truth is teens love rules. Kids love rules. It gives them a parameter with which in, to work. They understand these are the boundaries right. and I can be safe here in this space. Exactly. But if I break the boundaries and there's no consequences, then why were those boundaries set? It's exa what teens hate is hypocrisy. And so many times the rules that parents set and the way they follow through creates a hypocritical situation. And that's what the teens are reacting to. In fact, if I can just tell a little story. Sure. I said I was working with a whole family and I said to the parent, now the two, or sorry, one of the kids had ADD, the other one didn't. It was two, a brother and a sister and then two parents. And I said to the family, this may sound a little like kindergarten, but you might, at least for this family, it seemed the best way to go. You might want to put up a chart of what the chores are. And I waited to hear the kids say no. And this, <laughs> the kids said, yes, a chart, a chart, a chart. And these were 17 year olds. So <laughs> you don't always get the response that you think you're going to get when you have follow through and rules. It's, it's astounding and it's fantastic. And once a parent can get into that space of I am making a commitment to my family, they will feel their power and they will feel grounded and centered and they will know that there is nothing that can get in their way, not their ex, not their kids. They will be the parents again and their kids will be able to be the kids again. And so I'm going to guess that some of the difficulty that comes into, into the family experience is when a parent wants to be a friend rather than a mm -hmm. parent. And I'm going to think that that might be kind of complex for a teenager to handle. The child development theory has there, there are three kinds of parents. There's, there's the autocrat or the, the disciplinarian. And a lot of parents have had that kind of parent. So a lot of the parents that come to me, one of their biggest issues is, but I want to be a friend to my child because they're reacting against that parent that they had that was a disciplinarian. So they want to be a friend, which is actually the other extreme. So when a parent is a friend, the child can actually feel lost because somebody has to be the adult and it's a better idea for the parent to be the one that's the adult. <laughs> so it totally disorients them. Mm -hmm.